Yard and Garden is a production of the University of Minnesota Morris in cooperation with Pioneer Public Television. Additional support provided by Mark and Margaret Yako Julien in honor of Shalom Hill Farm, a nonprofit rural education retreat center in a beautiful prairie setting near Wyndham in southwestern Minnesota. ShalomHillFarm.org. I'm not sure, but I think every weed seed in Minnesota blew into our yard and sprouted during the past growing season. It seemed like we were constantly pulling weeds in our vegetable and flower gardens. Today on Prairie Yard and Garden, we are going to learn all about mulch and how it can make our gardening lives easier and more enjoyable. Welcome to Prairie Yard and Garden. I'm host Mary Holm and this week we are so thrilled to have a good friend returning home to the show. Sue Gooch was the host of Prairie Yard and Garden for 19 years and has agreed to come and teach us all about the many benefits of using mulch in our yards. Welcome back Sue. Well Mary it's really good to be here. I'm so glad that you were able to come and join us. Um, what exactly do you mean by mulch? Well, mulch, is, uh, mulch actually comes from a German word that means soft. And so really mulch is what you put on top of the soil and not what you incorporate into the soil. And so that's sort of one of the main differences between mulch and compost. Uh, compost you think of as organic matter that you incorporate into the soil and mulch is what you would lay on top of the soil more or less sort of like the comforter on your bed or the insulation in the wall of your house. And the compost will uh, be incorporated in the soil and will add fertility, but um, the mulch not, not necessarily so. The mulch doesn't necessarily add any fertility. Uh, it mulch, most all organic mulches will slowly break down and will then add some organic matter. So in some ways they do become compost in the end in that the critters will slowly bring it into the soil. What are some of the benefits of mulching? Well there's lots of really good benefits of mulch. The three most important ones are the first one is it maintains a really uniform moisture level in the, in the soil and so this allows for the, the, the water uh, the content of the soil to stay fairly even and it also helps to prevent the soil from crusting over. Uh, it also helps to prevent um, compaction. You know, when it rains, raindrops are really hard on soil and they will really uh, compact the soil quite a bit, particularly the heavy rains that we have around here. And so by having this layer of mulch there, it helps prevent the, the compaction from raindrops. So that's, that's the first uh, uh, reason why mulch is so good. The second one is that it insulates the soil a lot, just like I said before. It, it acts like the blanket on the bed or the insulation in your walls. And by doing that, it kind of um, prevents the soil from evaporating too, the moisture in the soil from evaporating too quickly. And so uh, it helps modulate that temperature and it stays much more even in the soil rather than you know these freeze-thaw cycles. The third reason is that it prevents weed growth and that's probably the one reason that most people really use it because pulling weeds as you said in your introduction takes a lot of time and by preventing the weed growth it's really smothering out weeds primarily annual weeds but the uh, perennial weeds also will uh, be will be suppressed some but 
The other thing is that the mulch actually, as it breaks down, adds kind of a soil layer at the bottom and the roots of the perennial weeds, particularly things like quackgrass, kind of work themselves up into the top layer of the soil. And then because the soil is, has a little bit more moisture in it due to the mulch, it, they become much easier to pull out. And then there's a couple of other uh, reasons. It does prevent a lot of mud splashing up on vegetables, particularly in, a ve uh, in the vegetable garden where disease is carried by uh, rain coming down and splashing mud up onto the lower leaves. And the other thing is that lots of fruits when they're ripening are sitting on the ground. And we're looking at squash, pumpkins, melons, that sort of thing. And the mulch will help protect them and keep them a little bit drier than if they were sitting right on the, on the muddy surface. And then one uh, final thing is that uh, it's a neat factor. Lots of people just like the neatness of mulch, and there are lots of different kinds of mulch out there I'm, we'll talk about later. Uh, and so there's, there's that sort of factor in there as well. Sue, when is the best time to mulch? Well, it varies depending on what you're going to mulch. So let's start first with perennials. Uh, the perennial bed is uh, typically mulched in order to uh, conserve the moisture and to, to help with those freeze-thaw cycles, particularly in the spring when, when the ground is thawing out. We often have the surface will then refreeze, and that's really hard on the crowns of perennials. And that's one of the reasons why we do put some winter mulch down. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But as far as mulching the, the perennial bed, um, the, when you plant the perennials, you can mulch then. And if you have an established perennial bed, then you can um, mulch, you add to the mulch every year. And, you know, as I said before, organic mulches do slowly tend to decompose, and so you're going to have to add more. I use a lot of chopped up leaves uh, just because they're available and uh, they're easy to work with. And, uh, but by the end of the season, most of those leaves have been incorporated into the soil. And so I have to add more the next year. Uh, but perennials, you want to mulch them and you don't want to actually put them right on top of the crown because you might smother out the crown. Uh, but up close to the up close to the crown and, and to you know to the stems and so forth and it really does help you know you don't have to water the perennials as much you don't have to and it, uh, you don't have to weed them as much and it just it really works well with perennials. How about trees and shrubs? Well with trees and shrubs there again uh, you want to put the mulch down when you plant the tree uh, and then continue to add to it as the mulch does decompose. Now the important thing with, with trees in particular is you don't want to pull the mulch up around the tree trunk. That's a real no-no because then you're incorporating the possibility of rot coming in there or insects and so you want to keep it just away from the trees, the trunk of the tree, oh maybe just a couple of inches. So it can be kind of mounded up but then it should be you know, a little concave section in there where the trunk is. The amount of mulch that you would put down for a tree can vary from, you know, anywhere three to six inches. And you should really put it out to the drip line, particularly with newly planted trees. So if you're planting a new tree that's, you know, say six foot high crab apple, for example, and it probably doesn't have too much spread quite yet, but you know, you can put that mulch out, you know, one to two feet all the way around the trunk to begin with. And then as the tree gets bigger and the branches begin to spread out more, then you would add some more mulch to that. I've heard the term, um, you don't want the volcano effect. Is that what you mean by saying keep the mulch away a little bit from the tree trunk? Right, right. So we don't want, want to make big volcanoes up and, up and around the tree trunk. And I see so many people, they do that. They think it looks looks nice and indeed it does but it really is doing a lot more damage than they think. How about the garden? I'll bet you that's a whole different ball game. Well with the vegetable garden it's a whole it is a whole different ball game. There's the vegetables uh, I tend to categorize them into uh, cool season, 
uh, not quite so cool season, warm season, hot season. And the, when you put the mulch down, it, it really is very dependent on what the vegetable is. So let's start with the cool season vegetables, things like uh, peas, uh, spinach, uh, lettuces, those things that you plant out in the garden right away as soon as the soil can be worked in the spring. You really want some cool soil at that time and so you wouldn't want to put mulch down on those vegetables right away. You would want them certainly to germinate and to get actively growing and then as the soil warms up you can put mulch around those things in order to keep that soil cool okay. because those plants tend to uh, not hold up well in warm soil. If you've ever tried to grow uh, lettuce later in the summer, mm -hmm. actually the soil is too hot and the seeds don't germinate well. And so um, that's why they're a cool season crop. So keeping the soil cool but not cold is uh, the best thing with cool season crops. And then there's the crops that are sort of warm season, uh, peppers, eggplants, tomatoes, um, that whole group, uh, green beans and so forth, they like the soil to be warm in order for the seed to even germinate. And even if you're putting transplants in, uh, they want the soil to be warm for the roots, for the roots to grow well. Sure. So there you want the soil to warm up before you put the mulch on. And actually the mulch for those kinds of crops is primarily more to suppress the weeds than it is to keep the uh, the soil cools, so to suppress the weeds and to sort of modulate the temperatures and hold the moisture in. Uh, so you don't need it quite so deep on those kinds of uh, vegetables. And then finally there's the really hot season crops. Those are things like melons, um, pumpkins, um, okra. Uh, they want the soil to be really hot and to stay hot all season. Uh, even sweet potatoes, they need long growing season with warm soil. And so you probably don't even want to put mulch down, but if you do, you can put a thin layer that will help to suppress the weeds. Uh, other than that, you know, uh, the, mulch, the mulch is great in the vegetable garden, particularly organic mulches, because it does add some organic matter slowly as, they, as it does decompose, and it does help tremendously in uh, controlling the weeds. Well that was one of, going to be my next question is what's the difference between organic and inorganic mulches? You've talked about them but what's the difference between them? Well organic mulches are are made of plant material. Uh, inorganic mulches are things like rock, plastic, uh, these things can all be a mulch as in that they're put on top of the soil but they're not organic and so they don't break down so that's the main difference. What is the advantage or the disadvantages of using the different kinds of mulches? Well there's lots of different different kinds of organic mulches and obviously since I've said this word many times I'm more a fan of organic mulches than I am of inorganic mulches. Um, Let's start with grass clippings. Since we're standing here in a vegetable garden and there are grass clippings here, grass clippings really work well uh, in a vegetable garden. They dry down fairly rapidly. You don't want to put them on uh, very thick. So you need to put them on maybe you know one to two inches at the most okay. uh, because that tends to crust over and then if it does crust over, the rain does not penetrate through as easily. But the grass decomposes pretty quickly. It gets pulled into the soil pretty quickly. It's a, it's a ready resource if you're mowing your lawn and collecting the grass. And so it uh, makes a, a, a really good mulch. Now, some people want to leave the grass clippings on their lawn, and that's a whole different program if you're going to talk about lawns. Uh, and that's a good thing, too. But if you want to collect the grass clippings, putting them in the vegetable garden is a, is a good way to do that. So that's one kind of mulch. Uh, others are wo uh, wood chips and shredded bark. Now these are mulches that are uh, commercially available, uh, off but often you can get them from tree service people if you, because uh, they don't know what to do with them. And so if they're cutting a tree down or removing a stump in your neighborhood, it's quite easy to get them for nothing. 
Otherwise, you can buy them by the bag at you know any of the nurseries and the big box stores and so forth. Those kinds of mulches, wood, I like the shredded bark much better than wood chips in that shredded bark uh, kind of knits itself together and doesn't float away in a rain. And in wood, with wood chips, if it really pours rain, they will float away until they get really anchored in there. I know there was a church that um, I saw at one time that they had put the chunks in and we got a rain and they just kind of lifted right up and went right into the lawn. So you are exactly right. Yeah, that will happen. Uh, shredded bark tends to be, you know, it has lots of little shreds and so they sort of knit together and they uh, stay much better. Uh, both of these mulches are very good for perennial gardens, for shrub plantings, for trees, uh, even if for an annual garden. They get to be a little more difficult to work with in an annual garden because you have to keep pulling them away whenever you want to put in a new annual. To put down um, the wood chips and the shredded, uh, shredded bark, uh, you can put down, you know, three to four inches. With shrubs, you can go up, you know, four inches. Around perennials, I'd stay more at three. Uh, and it just works really well. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to mention about the wood chips is they do come in all kinds of colors. So uh, you can use natural, which I prefer, but it does come dyed in browns and uh, golds and rusts and deep reds and uh, but it's just, you know, a matter of taste as to, as to what you like. And then what are inorganic mulches? Uh, inorganic mulches would be primarily rock, and rock it works very well in a foundation planting. Uh, you would want to put a piece of black plastic down underneath before you put the rock down. If you ever want to take the rock out, it becomes a real chore uh, to pick out all of that rock. And, but it does have its, its, its place. Uh, I wouldn't use it in a, a perennial garden. I would use it only really with a shrub planting around a foundation. Uh, you want to be careful about um, mowing up close to, to rock and that you don't want to mow so that the, the grass clippings and seeds go into the rock. They tend to uh, break down in there and they actually make a little bit of soil uh, on top of the plastic that's under the rock and then you'll start getting some weed seeds germinating in there and then that gets to be a problem. Mm -hmm. And now some people have actually used fabric underneath their rock also. Fabric works fine and you can actually use fabric itself as a mulch. Um, the fabric is there primarily as a weed barrier. Uh, you it, the landscape fabric or some people use black plastic black because the rock will poke a few holes in the plastic and so the water does tend to get through or the water will drain away from the house you certainly wouldn't want to put it so that the water would drain next to the foundation but the um, black fabric can also be considered a mulch lots of people will use that to as a weed barrier and also to let the water through and you could put mulch on top of the of the landscape fabric now i've used that uh, when growing melons when i've wanted to warm the soil up ahead of time uh, i will put down black plastic or black fabric mulch to warm the soil up in order to get quicker so I can get a melon crop and a sweet potato crop. And then I don't even put mulch on top of that because I feel that it probably insulates it a little bit too much, but it does keep the weeds under control. I have a question. I've seen this large white vine-like plant in the wild that looks like a cucumber. Is it? Yes, well actually it's in the cucumber family and we call it a wild cucumber, uh, sometimes a burr cucumber, but that's another plant in the cucumber family. But this is an annual weed. Um, it's actually native to Minnesota, native to all the United States. And in certain areas in the fall of the year, it will cover shrubs and even start to climb up trees. It's a vine like a cucumber and it does have a leaf that looks like a cucumber leaf. And it has a white flower. The white flower will stand up above the foliage and so you'll see these 
uh, kind, kind of candelabra white flowers and then this big vine growing over plants. Even though it's an annual, it can grow 15, 25 feet in a season. So it can take over an area, but it propagates by seed and it has a little uh, burr-shaped cucumber-like seed pod. And um, it's, it's very, um, it looks like a nettle almost. And if you cut that open, there are four large seeds inside. So it spreads by seed. So if you have it and you want to control it, you want to make sure that you cut it off at the base and keep it from uh, producing those cucumber-like fruits that are going to then set seed and then grow again the following year. Cucumber, wild cucumber likes boggy, wet places, so it tends to be near streams and wet areas, marshy areas, where it gets quite a bit of moisture. But it's amazing how quickly it can grow, and if, you, if it self-seeds, uh, you'll have even more the next year. So you don't want it to cover up the shrubs because uh, that can actually um, be detrimental. Probably won't kill any plants, but it's something you want to learn to watch for and control so it doesn't get out of hand. Ask the Arboretum Experts has been brought to you by the Minnesota Landscape Arboretum in Chanhassen, dedicated to enriching lives through the appreciation and knowledge of plants. So then how do we mulch in the fall? We've talked about kind of mulching over the, over the summer, but um, sometimes we should mulch in the fall too. Right, actually um, it's very good to put down mulch on the perennial garden in the fall. Uh, because of the fact that we get these freeze-thaw cycles, not only in the spring, as I mentioned earlier, but also in the fall as the ground is beginning to freeze and we get a couple warm days around Thanksgiving, it thaws out again and then it freezes again, you know, this up and down sort of thing. That's hard on the, on the crowns of perennial plants as they're trying to go dormant. And so putting a layer of mulch down on the perennial garden is really a good thing in the winter. It also helps protect the plants in case we don't get any snow. Uh, I can remember some, some pretty snowless or very little snow uh, cover years that we've had in the past. And uh, so that really helps protect those crowns. And by, when you put the mulch down, uh, the kind of mulch that I use in the fall is more like um, chopped up leaves and uh, maybe straw. Straw is very good. Uh, you can save bags of leaves and then just put them down there. And if you leave the, the stems of the perennials up, those stems actually help hold the leaves and the straw in place from the wind. Uh, otherwise, you know, with our north winds, it will really, you know, they'll blow to the neighbor, you know. <laughs> the neighbor has to clean them up. But uh, it's really good to mulch the perennial garden down, and for, in particular, newly planted perennials. So if you're putting in new perennials in the early fall, like in September, or, or uh, that's probably the latest I would go. Their roots have gotten somewhat established, but they still would need quite a bit of protection uh, to get them through the first year. How about evergreens? Do, does mulch help protect them from browning and getting winter burned? Uh, the mulch doesn't protect them from winter burn. Uh, the winter burn is coming more from the sun uh, and the, the winds and the drying out. Uh, so I don't know that the mulch is helping there. It's only helping just to sort of modulate the temperature as the ground begins to to freeze. Okay. Uh, and I forgot to mention that the time to put the mulch down uh, in the fall is when the ground is just beginning to freeze. So you can wait almost to Thanksgiving sometimes before you put that down. You want to catch it before the first snow. So if it's, they say it's going to snow the first week in November and you think that that snow is going to stay, I would get the mulch out. Uh, before you know it gets covered with snow because once the snow is there and it stays then it's hard to put the mulch down and how then when should you take that mulch off in the spring well in the spring you take the mulch off as as it begins to thaw out and as as you know when in the spring it'll thaw a little and then it'll get cold and it'll freeze back and so you want to be careful that you don't take it off too soon some of the plants uh, actually have started their crown growth underneath that mulch in the late winter and so if you're if you 
if it's thawed out a little on top and you pull that mulch back and you see that you know there's some crown growth there already I wouldn't take that mulch completely away I would keep it nearby because if it gets cold again uh, that's when you can really lose mums the 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 easiest is in the spring when it's beginning to thaw out so I'd keep the mulch nearby so you can just put it back on top again. Oh, I've heard of many people that have lost their mums, so I can sure think that that is a great tip to, to mulch them to help survivability on those. Right, right. Sue, so recently I was at somebody's um, garden and they had actually put newspaper out in their garden. Have you ever seen that or heard of that? Well, yes, I've used, I've used newspaper many times and newspapers are readily available. We have an abundance of them. And I have um, used newspapers very effectively for actually killing out grass and starting a new flower bed. <laughs> um, but the other thing that works well, if you don't like to look at the newspaper, you could put grass clippings down on top or you could put wood chips down on top of the newspaper. One thing I meant, meant to say earlier about grass clippings was you shouldn't use any grass clippings in your garden that have had any kind of pesticide or herbicide put on them from the lawn. So if you have put down like weed and feed on your lawn, you wouldn't want to use those grass clippings for, I would say at least three to five mowings before I would take the grass clippings and put, it, put them on the lawn. Well, you know, in the spring, it doesn't take too long to have three to five mowings. So it probably time-wise works out pretty well. Yeah, because you could damage your vegetables just from the herbicide. Right, right. Oh, that's a good tip. Thank you. Are there any other types of mulches that you're familiar with that we should learn about? Well, there's, there's a new sort of, I don't want to say fad, but a new theory going out about living mulches. Now, living mulches really are ground covers, and they do the, they work the same way as, you know, putting on, you know, a, a a wood chip or grass clippings. So here you have a, pl a plant as a, a living mulch and uh, ground covers work the best. So you want ground covers that are shallow rooted because those don't compete with the deep roots of perennials. So for example, if you have a hosta bed, the roots of hostas go down fairly deep. But if you could put a shallow rooted ground cover around the hostas, for example, a juga, a money wart, um, any of the sedums, that sort of thing, uh, it works really well as what we call a living mulch. And uh, it also is very decorative as well. So it's one way, a different way to think about mulches, but uh, it's being used a lot more now. Well, Sue, thank you so much for coming and being on Prairie Yard and Garden. You have given us a world of wonderful information. Well, thank you, Mary. It's really been fun to, to do this again, and I've really enjoyed it. Well, thanks. Additional support provided by Mark and Margaret Yakel Julien in honor of Shalom Hill Farm, a nonprofit rural education retreat center in a beautiful prairie setting near Wyndham in southwestern Minnesota, shalomhillfarm.org.